Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to Mondays with Mike on this October 10th. It is my wife's birthday, so um, I'm actually not working at the station today, but she probably won't be watching. But if she is, happy birthday. I hope everybody's having a terrific day. We have uh, some interesting things to talk about today, including a question that I have for you. Just wanting you to think about it. Maybe let it stew for a couple of minutes. Why have there been more storms that begin with the letter I that have been retired than any other letter? And it's not even close, not even close. Okay, so that's number one on our agenda today. I'm going to go ahead and share screen here and we will get to the rundown. So on the rundown for today, we have the mystery. Yes, the ongoing mystery of the I named hurricanes. We're also going to talk about the fact that you may be wondering, it's October. Are we in the clear? Well, the answer is yes and no. So I'll tell you why the answer is yes and no in just a moment. And also big Texans shout out uh, coming up. All right. So uh, behind me, or let's see, I'm going to pull this up here. So this is a list here that might be a little intriguing to you. Obviously, we just had uh, back uh, at the end of uh, September, Hurricane Ian, which was historic, devastating uh, in Southwest Florida. Uh, this, they're just beginning to pick up the pieces there, and it's probably going to take them at least a year to rebuild, if not longer. Well, that was an eye storm, okay? Hurricane Ike for us was an eye storm. Well, this is a look back at all of the eye named storms that have been retired. Now, before I show you this, let me just tell you where the names come from and so forth. How did this tradition start? Well, the long and short of it is that back when hurricanes, if you were to go back hundreds of years, there really was not an organized system for tracking hurricanes. You may know that a hurricane is coming or you know, a sailor may come in and report that there's, there's a hurricane or there's a big windstorm, but obviously the tracking and the forecasting was not in any way sophisticated. Well, as we got more sophisticated in the early part of the 20th century, there came a, um, a, a time when it became useful to label the hurricanes because you might have multiple hurricanes on a latitude and longitude map. Uh, let's say of the Atlantic Ocean, It'd be pretty difficult to have to just say that one and that one. So uh, the forecasters who were um, uh, trying to figure out a solution would name the storms and they would give them nicknames, really. Um, usually, as this legend goes, they were named after like their wives or girlfriends. And so that's why they had all ladies names uh, like, you know, Betsy or Susie or something like that. Right. Well, in 1953, um, the uh, Weather Bureau um, decided to standardize and to name storms. So it started with the 1953 season, and the deal is that they would go in alphabetical order, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, E, um, and they were all female names, which is why all, by the way, of the infamous storms that you might have heard of from your parents or, you know, and or grandparents, um, storms like Camille and Agnes and Betsy and uh, Carla and Beulah, and they all have lady names because they were all in the 50s and 60s. And it wasn't until 1979 that uh, the National Hurricane Center and the United Nations World Meteorological Organization, WMO, they decided to standardize everything to male, female names, or at least names that are traditionally known to be male, female um, and um, to alternate them in alphabetical order. Also, as a short aside, um, names are chosen because of the cultures that are impacted by the storm. So names in the Atlantic Basin are English names, Spanish names, and French names, because those are the languages of the countries like the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, of course, the US territory, Haiti, Cuba, Mexico, the United States, Belize, you know, where they speak English. So it's a variety of you know, the Caribbean where they speak English. So, uh, and some Spanish. So Spanish, English, French. Um, if you go over to like the Western Pacific Ocean where storms hit Japan and China and um, the Philippines and places like that, they don't go alphabetical because they 
uh, each country gets to nominate names and the names are not in alphabetical order because each country obviously has its own language. And so some of them are uh, Vietnamese and some of them are Japanese and some of them are Chinese. And that, that's how that works over there. So it's not as, it, it's a little bit of an idiosyncrasy for us in the United States and in Mexico in the Caribbean because we have alphabetical storms in the Atlantic and in the, uh, the Eastern Pacific. All right. With that being said, uh, so you may wonder, okay, well, um, first of all, what's retiring? Well, just like um, if a sports star is great for a team for a long, long time, they'll retire his or her jersey because you know they're never going to use that jersey again because they had such an impact. Well, on the bad side of things, if a hurricane or a tropical storm has a tremendous impact as far as a loss of life, property damage, and so forth, then the name will be retired and a new name will be added to the list. Uh, Hurricane Ian, which hit um, late September in Florida, has not been retired yet, although it will be. And that will make the 13th storm that begins with the letter I to be retired. And this is just a quick list of some of the other storms that are on the list, and you'll recognize some of them. Um, in fact, what's really remarkable is that since 2001, we've had 11, counting Ian, we've had 11 storms uh, with the name I retired. Now, some ones that might be noteworthy to you, of course, would be Ike, which uh, hit us, you know, terribly. Uh, you also may remember Ida from last year. Ida is the one that slammed into New Orleans, but then actually caused more damage in the northeastern U.S. So it caused a lot of damage on the Gulf Coast. Then it moved up to Pennsylvania, New York State, uh, New England, and caused extreme flooding there and actually caused more damage there. Um, lots of other names on the list uh, might ring a bell. Uh, for example, Hurricane Isabel was one that went into Chesapeake Bay. That was uh, like the, the Delmarva area, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, Washington, D.C. Um, there was also uh, a storm named Isidore. Uh, it caused very serious flooding in Central America and in the Yucatan. And then it went up and also made landfall not too far away from uh, New Orleans. So anyway, these are all the I storms. In all, 12 of them officially, 13 of them unofficially. Now, what's interesting, though, is the fact that um, when we look at, um, wait, what I wanted to show you was, hold on just a second, come on now. Um, let, me, let me make this smaller. What I wanted to show you was how unusual this is that we've had so many eye storms. So if you look at your screen right now, this is a list of all of the hurricane names that have been retired by letter. Okay, so for example, Storms that start with the letter A, there have been seven of those retired, including some memorable ones for us, like Allison, which of course was a tropical storm. Um, there have been nine C storms retired, so that's a lot. There have been nine F storms retired, and like I just pointed out, there have been 12, soon to be 13, I storms. But I wanna point out a few curiosities to you, and herein lies the mystery. You would think, okay, um, my first inkling when somebody says, why are there so many I storms that have been retired? Well, the obvious answer is I storms, that's the ninth storm of the year, tend most often to form during the sort of the meat of hurricane season, late August into September. That's when I storms usually form. It's when Ike hit. It's, uh, you know, it's when Ian just hit. I mean, many others. So, they tend to hit during the part of the hurricane season when you tend to have the largest storms. And so that makes sense. Um, however, this is one of the weird sort of parts of the mystery is that you would also think that the storm, is, so if I is the ninth named storm, you would think that the eighth and the 10th would have similar numbers or at least close, right? They don't, that's the mystery. So there have been, there will be, 13 retired I storms, but if you look at H, there have been only six, half the number of H compared to I. Of course, we had Harvey, right? Um, but only half uh, when you look at the history. And then J, which is the, the next one after I, there have been only five that have been retired. Now, I'll say um, 
you know, when you get toward the later letters of the alphabet, you know, in an average season, you have 12 named storms. I is the ninth, J is the 10th. So as you progress, let's say past M, then obviously you're going to have fewer retired names because you literally have fewer storms. So that, that makes sense. But as far as like, you know, storm one through 12, or, you know, basically A through, you know, taking us through, um, you know, K, L, M, those letters, what you'll notice is that there have been an inordinate amount of I storms, okay? Six H's, five G's, five J's, three K's, six M's, which is interesting, including Mitch, which was a, an all-time record setter, and Michael. But, but why, tw why 13 I's? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you my guess in just a minute. I also wanted to point out, you know, a lot of you um, maybe grew up hearing about the so-called ABC storms. Okay, maybe you haven't, but um, the ABC storms, that refers to the fact that in Texas, in Louisiana, basically around the Gulf Coast, our most infamous historic storms tended to be ABC. A, B, or C. And so you think of some of the big storms we've had, like um, Alicia in 1983, obviously the A storm, Tropical Storm Allison, the A storm. Uh, we had Hurricane Beulah, which was one of the most prolific uh, tornado creating hurricanes that hit the central Texas coastline, caused a ton of tornadoes in Texas. I think over a hundred tornadoes, I believe. That was Beulah, the B storm. We had one of the worst hurricanes in history, Camille, that hit Mississippi, sea storm. Uh, we had Hurricane Carla that hit Port Lavaca in 1961, caused a widespread damaging flood, uh, flooding in um, uh, Galveston and also deadly tornadoes that hit Galveston Island. Um, that was the, the sea storm. So uh, there was also a big Hurricane Allen that hit South Texas. So ABC is really, um, has a history of producing a lot of terrible storms, especially for our part of the world. And what I can say about the ABC storms is that it makes sense that there would be a lot of those retired because they tend to form, not always, Andrew is an exception, for example, but they tend to, on average, form close to land um, in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Caribbean. So it's more likely then let's say a K or a J or an L storm that may be way out in the Atlantic late in the season, that an A, B or C storm is going to hit Texas or Louisiana or the Yucatan or the Dominican Republic or Cuba, or, you know, someplace really close by. So that's my, you know, sort of guess as to why there would be so many A storms and so many ABC storms retired. I have no good guess as to why there have only been three B storms. Why would there be seven A's and nine C's and only three B's? I mean, it really doesn't add up. So I will tell you that my uh, guess, my best guess, and just being sort of a, you know, a math nerd and a statistics nerd and obviously you know, a weather guy, uh, my best guess is that this is chance. Uh, it's kind of like if you were playing poker and you got dealt uh, three kings or something, uh, and then you played another hand and you got three aces and you say, wow, I'm, I get a great hand every time. If you played for long enough, you would start to notice that you would go through a drought and get some terrible hands too. You need to have a sufficient um, sample size. And so when you talk about like, let's just say, for example, like uh, who's going to win the presidential election, right? Do they ask 10 people? No, of course not. Do they take a poll of 100 people? No, they take a poll of like 1,000 people or, or 1200 people or something like that. Um, because if you don't ask enough people, you're not going to get an accurate sample size. And so since hurricanes have only been named since 1953, we've only had 70 seasons, which is not many. So I suspect that if we were to play this uh, computer simulation out, okay, because we're not going to be here, right? But if we were to play this simulation out for another 100 or 200 or 300 hurricane seasons, it, it would all level out. It would really level out. Um, and you would probably have an almost equal number of severe storms through around I, J, and then it would go down um, as the storms become less frequent. So 
that is my input uh, into the mystery of the eye storms. 13. That just blows my mind. This is going to be the 13th. And then you go to the H's and they've only been six and the J's there have only been uh, five. So I think that's really interesting. All right. So uh, next on the agenda is going to be um, it's October is Texas in the clear. So I will give you a quick look at that. OK, so as we take a look at this, let me go ahead and advance to the next graphic, because the answer uh are we in the clear in the month of October is yes and no. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is a look right here at um, Hurricane Jerry. This is a system that is the latest on record, the latest hurricane on record to hit the Texas coast. This is October 15th, 1989. And it is the only one that's hit from what I can see, it's the only hurricane that's hit, not just that late in the season, but the only one that's hit in October, at least in since we've had good records, like I said, you know, over the last, let's say, 100 years or so, uh, 100 plus years. There's not another one that I can see that's hit in October as far as a hurricane. So when we look at October, um, uh, direct landfalls in Texas are very rare. Um, you know, you have like maybe a 1% chance in any year that you would have an October landfall, which is not zero, but it becomes very, very rare. However, and this is the part where I would say yes and no, uh, are we in the clear? October has an infamous history of hurricanes that hit from the Eastern Pacific Ocean. They hit the West Coast of Mexico, they move across Mexico, and they cause serious flooding in Texas. There's been a long history of that. And so I have some examples on the screen. Hurricane Norma uh, in 1981, Tico in 1983. Uh, also notice, by the way, we're deep into the alphabet at this point, okay? Because these are October hurricanes in the Pacific. So the N storm, the T storm, the R storm, you see? Uh, Rosa in 1994. In fact, I wanna skip over here and, and show you Rosa because some of you might remember this. If you were here at the time, I wasn't. Um, this is also known as the October 94 floods or the you know, Houston floods of October 1994 was caused by the remnant moisture from Hurricane Rosa. And it caused extremely serious flooding along like Cypress Creek and Spring Creek, uh, north side of Harris County, um, extreme flooding on the San Jacinto River and the Trinity River. In fact, what you're looking at on the screen right now is a uh, from the U.S. Geological Survey. And each one of these bars that you see represents a uh, rainfall amount. So, for example, uh, in Chambers County, about 28 inches of rain. Um, there were numerous reports of between a foot to a foot and a half of rain around Harris County, and then some of the gauges up around um, Montgomery County northward, heading up to closer to Lake Livingston, had 25 inches of rain. So widespread 15, 20, 25 inch downpours from Hurricane Rosa. That was a Pacific storm. We also had Hurricane Madeline which caused a lot of flooding, I think, in Central Texas. And then most recently, you might remember this, Patricia was a hurricane that uh, was record setting. It hit the West Coast of Mexico 2015. It was a Category 5. And it moved across and really brought a surprise deluge of rain to our area. Didn't look like it was going to hold together. And it, it raced by so fast. As I recall, I mean, this is seven years ago, but it, it raced by really fast and just dumped rain on us really, really hard for one day. So. So that's that's the answer to, you know, are we in the clear in Texas in October as far as any hurricanes? Yes, you almost never get landfalling hurricanes along the Texas coastline in October, but not 100 percent because you can get remnants of hurricanes that can cause some serious flooding in Texas in October. And then finally, uh, before I go, I just want to say uh, that I am very happy that the Texans came out with a victory today in Jacksonville. Uh, did they look good? No, they really did it. Uh, however, um, uh, our, uh, our running back, uh, Damian Pierce, his name was escaping me for a minute. Uh, Damian Pierce is He's looking good, isn't he? 
I mean, he's a rookie. Um, from a, I'm not going to hold it against him that he went to the University of Florida either, but uh, he is spectacular. I mean, he's he's great. And then I know people aren't too hot on Davis Mills, but I think he threw a couple of good passes. Uh, the Jaguars look terrible. Um, so hopefully we could really beat a quality team, but um, we got to win. We got to win. So congratulations, Texans. And thank you so much for joining me. If you have any theories as to why you think there have been so many eye storms that have been retired, that have been so uh, historic and catastrophic, let me know in the comments. But just to summarize, my feeling is it's a combination of they hit generally in September when storms are very strong and it's a game of chance. And if we ran the simulation enough times, everything would even out. So thanks so much. Hope you have a terrific week. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me on Mondays with Mike. Take care. See you next week.